Hey, team. I made it back. I'm alive. I probably shouldn't say that. Shouldn't joke about that. That would be bad, right? Bad day. How we doing? Anybody here? There's somebody here. I know there's somebody here. It tells me somebody's here. Blake, welcome. I just realized I gotta check my site. Because I did something. <laughs> I did something I should, like, never do. And that is, like, publish code in production without testing it. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't work. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. There's always someone here. Blake's forever on time. Unless you're flying. Unless you're flying. I think I'm getting my voice back. Not 100%, but I'm getting close. I am getting close. I should probably tweet and say we're live. I didn't know OmniFocus was going to be releasing something today. I was not expecting that at all. So when they did it, it's like, whoa, hold on. I didn't know this was in the works. Jersey Channel Islands. Welcome, Simon. I... Jersey Channel Islands. I My brain, I cannot place where that is. What are, what are we talking about? Is this Europe? status boards do I have the link here there in the works what is in the works and reload I don't know what's in the works <clears throat> I don't know what we're talking about, Blake. Between England and France. What time is it there? I am terrible at this. This is the sort of thing that I'm supposed to know. The difference there. Hi, Carol. Like I feel like I should know that time change, but I am, alas, terrible. 6.30? I suppose, Blake, you would know that. I wasn't really talking about anything important other than I didn't know OmniFocus was going to be releasing things today. 7.30 p.m. That's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm trying to remember. There was one... I had a client call with someone at one point that... How did that work? We were connecting and I was at 8 p.m., I think. And they set up that time. They chose that time. It was like three in the morning their time. And I have no idea why they did that. They thought it was like the time that they should do it. That's just strange. Why would you, like you're trying to plan a website build at three in the morning? Just sounds like a bad idea on so many fronts. Just bad. Don't do that. You're gonna hurt people doing that. So don't do it. <laughs> don't do that at all. That's my recommendation. Don't do phone calls at 3 a.m. Did anybody know that OmniFocus was working on OmniFocus 4? I was not aware of this at all. And I saw the tweet earlier that they were looking for beta testers, which I suppose I should probably look into. I know, right? So 
I looked at their blog post about it. Is that the only place, now that I'm saying this, is that the only place OmniFocus 4 has been talked about? Imore already has an article out on it. Somebody's already asking about the release date for it. That's it. Um, so Imore has a thing about it. We should probably look at that one to see what they say about it. And then, oh, this is from back. Yeah, so that doesn't actually tell me anything. So yeah, OmniFocus 4. It's a thing, apparently. And I didn't know this. What is my computer doing? It was doing this the other day, too. It's doing some form of like weird encoding lag. Let me see if it's just being dumb. Maybe I'm telling it to make a recording that's too big. I was like, it's not actually streaming. This thing is streaming. Settle down, dude. All right, OmniFocus. Should we look at this? Who else here? Did they introduce resistance? We're going to talk about that. We, 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 need to, we need to talk about Max Sparky. That's what that's about. I have thoughts on it. I need to get my notes over here. I have notes, friends. It's great fun. Also, loving the use of a stream deck for stuff like this. <laughs> it makes my life so much easier. <laughs> All right, let's look at this. OmniFocus 4. First off, I didn't know. Well, it's nothing new on Sparky's site. Um, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Wait, what did he do? <laughs> First off, before we get too far, you hit the like button, subscribe, all those things. I feel weird saying that live, but that does help. Help some other folks find us while we're live here. Uh, so give that. Click the buttons. Thanks for that. Help me out in the algorithm. All the computer systems that tell other people what they should and shouldn't watch. OmniFocus 4, first look, an invitation to help test. First off, it's kind of a weird way to say that, isn't it? And invitation to help test test I think is what that is I think I would have put OmniFocus 4 first look and beta test invitation I think that's what I would have said but hey invitation to help test sure however you want to do it the OmniFocus team has been hard at work on OmniFocus 4 a major new version now the thing about this is that this is a complete rebuild, right? So this is a, a massive undertaking on the part of Omni Group. Yeah, Carol, I you're correct. You're probably not subscribed. And I apologize for that. I need to I need to put out a newsletter or something explaining this, but I went into the channel that I'd been posting videos on and it wouldn't let me put the vanity custom URL of Joe Bulig next to the youtube.com piece. And it was because it already existed. And I thought, oh, really? Somebody took that? And then I remembered, oh, wait, dummy. You did that back in the day when you set up your Gmail account. So I went and tried to get a hold of YouTube. I tried to do a whole bunch of things to move it over to that channel. It's not possible. So that means that Joe had to either decide to wait until his channel was large enough that they could change it for him or bite the bullet and do it now and just switch which channel I was using 
and deal with the pain now while I'm still a fairly small, really, well, really small YouTuber. So I just decided to bite the bullet. So if you have subscribed to me in the past, I apologize, you will have to do it again because the new channel has eight subscribers, as you can see way over there in the corner. <laughs> Whereas the other one has, I don't even know what, 200 something. So still, in the scheme of YouTube, it's fairly small. Anyway, all that to say, I apologize, you'll have to subscribe again. I need to work on getting the other channel deleted, but I can't get rid of those other videos yet until I get them moved over to this one. And Joe has not felt well, so it hasn't happened. Here we are. So, apologies on that, on that front. That was a long explanation for this. But thanks for pointing that out. That's a good point. It needed to be said. Appreciate it. Um, OmniFocus, the Omni Group has been working on a complete rebuild here. And I think they've done a ton of work to basically recreate their app. Because I, th where is it at down here? They said, da, 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 da. do I even see it? Nope, I don't see. Oh, wait, 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 wait. OmniFocus 4 will be a universal cross-platform product. Oh, that doesn't answer it. They, I'm pretty sure I saw that they had, this is a complete rebuild in Swift UI. So this is them taking their, their um, Objective C, I think it's Objective C, code base and rewriting it in Swift, which is no small task, right? That's a big deal. So they've, they've done a ton of work on it. And just from looking at the pictures, like it doesn't look that much different, but I reading the list of things that they are changing and the things they have done, it will be incremental edits, right? So this is not gonna be some big massive overall. This isn't OmniFocus one to two. And I don't know, I'm trying to remember OmniFocus 2 into 3. There was a fair number of changes when they made that edit from 2 to 3. But I wouldn't say it was... It was nothing like 1 to 2. That was huge. OmniFocus 1 is where I started. And they have done a ton of work to get it to where it's at today. So 4... I think OmniFocus 4, from what I can tell, is going to be similar to that move from 2 to 3 as opposed to 1 to 2. This isn't a complete revolutionary, tons of new looks, new features, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a complete rebuild, right? Like we've been talking about, with some niceties added on. Okay? And I think the thing that is interesting here is that this sets them up like there there's so many times that OmniFocus the Omni group talks about making database structure changes or foundational changes that will then allow them to make some more edits down the line and they say that again here the new interface centers around a completely redesigned task outline now optimized for iPad and iPhone, which, again, as you look at it, isn't going to look that much different. And I guess I've got OmniFocus up here. We could look at them on mine. Yeah. Um, this isn't going to feel completely revolutionary, like I've been saying. However, there are a handful of features that they're putting into this that I think would warrant the upgrade in in this, because I think there's, there are some things that they're going to be putting in that I'm like, that has been needed for such a long time. And they're doing some of these little bits 
as part of this complete rebuild, right? And it's some simple stuff, right? So focus mode is now supported in OmniFocus 4. Can you see this? It's kind of small. So focus mode, they're putting in. I'll come back to the picture. I want to look through that. Yeah, I think, you know, they like to future-proof things, Blake. They do. And I appreciate that. You know, there have been a number of times that I'm, like, trying to do some, like, code work on top of OmniFocus. And, like, for example, there's some scripts that I've written that are... How old are they? How old, how old, how old are... Joe's OmniFocus scripts at this point. What's the oldest one on here? Five years? Yeah, this was written five years ago. I bet you this would run today. It would not surprise me at all. Is there any of these that are older than that that haven't been touched? This one's six years. That one might break. This one would probably break because it's dependent on... <laughs> But it's not because of OmniFocus. It's because of the weather API that it's going to be connected to. <laughs> Your work schedule on a system feels like it was built in the 90s. That's on you, my friend. I can't change that for you. I could try. You can point them my way, but nah. So focus mode. It's just where you can like select a project or a group and then you can focus everything on that. Then you can move around on the app with that focused. This is never something I think I've really used, you know, whenever I was all in on OmniFocus, I would have like a set area that I would choose. And like, for example, I would work on code projects or pro course whenever that was a thing. I would select pro course and then focus on it. And then I would just work on those projects. That would be helpful, but I only ever did that on my Mac. And I can't say that I ever really wanted to do that on, on my phone. So that, that will be kind of cool for some people. I'm sure the inspectors have been fully redesigned. Do they have, no, they don't have a picture of that. That would be like if you select the information icon. So no, they don't have pictures of that. So I'm, I'm very curious to see what that, that would look like. Navigation view within a perspective has been fully redesigned. It can be collapsed on the iPad. Opening a perspective on iPhone navigates directly to the outline. And the navigation library can be accessed by tapping the perspective header. What would that even be? Here, you want to see what I'm looking at? Did I set this up? Yeah, here we go. I forgot, now that I don't have my phone as my camera, I'm using this GoPro now. You can actually see my phone now. I don't think it'll move while I do this. So, here's Joe's OmniFocus inside baseball. We go to projects. I've got a bunch of pieces of content here that I've been debating what to do with. I've built the, I've got the templates in here, but I just haven't decided what to do with them. The the ones that would be of interest, I suppose this is a perspective, isn't it? Let's look at completed. So if I understand this correctly, on the iPhone, when you open a perspective, which is what I just did, it's navigating directly to the outline and the navigation library can be accessed by topping the tapping the perspective header, which in this case does nothing. I mean, you can hit the icon next to it, right? But right now it does nothing. I know, super fancy, Blake. So yes, this is... Here's a list of all the things I just did before I started here. Because that's the checklist I use when I start streaming. Should probably not click the stop streaming button. Cord was trying to get over there. 
All I have to say, I'm not really sure I understand what this navigation piece is. Like, what is the navigation library? Is that the home page? But I would call it the home page. So I'm not sure what they're meaning meaning by that, because I don't I don't see anything here that would indicate that. That'll be a fun one. That'll be a fun one. That is that I think that one has to be a video. People forget that I type on a Dvorak keyboard and whenever people are remember remember it or see it it confuses them. Like I've got my keyboard here. Can you see this? Yeah. So this is my keyboard. We got it upside down here. There you go. Check out the keys on that. If you pay attention to the layout, if you can see those, depending on what screen you're watching this on. And whenever I have people come in and they look at this and they start paying attention to the letters on the individual keys, it totally messes with them. <laughs> it's very fun for me. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know what this whole navigation thing is with perspectives. I'm not real sure what that is. But I think it's interesting, at least a little bit. Tyler, are you a Dvorak guy? Please tell me you are. I run across very few people who are Dvorak typists. It it makes me happy whenever I find when I find one. Do you want to see the actual? I suppose I just showed you the. Yes, Taylor. We can be friends. Not that QWERTY typers can't be. And a Vim user. Dude. You just made my day. I run across, like, I run across Vim users, okay? I run across a handful of Dvorak typers. Putting the two together is not common. Here we go. I got to show you this. Here's the layout for you QWERTY Luddites. Because you're behind. This is what I type on. <laughs> the part that's difficult is that I do have to switch back. Like, right over here I have an iMac... I don't even know what year it is. It'd be a, oh, let's see. It'd be a 2019 iMac, 2018 iMac, somewhere in there that has a QWERTY keyboard on it. About when, how, and why I decided to change. There's actually a decent amount on my site about this. Yeah, so I've, I've written a number of things on it. When did I start this? 2016? Yeah. And in the span of... I was doing some typing tests for a couple weeks to see how my speed increased. And over the span of two weeks, I was going from mid-teens to, I'd say, about mid-30s. And uh, today, la at least the last time I tested it, it was um, upwards in the 90 words a minute on Dvorak. I got to change one thing. This thing is still being dumb. It's getting closer, though. Um, as far as how to switch, I just went all in. It's, it's difficult and it's not something I recommend for people unless you, 
and maybe Tyler can speak to this too. Like I, I don't recommend very many people to switch to Dvorak. I switched in a period when I had recently switched jobs to working for myself and had no need specifically to type. Like it wasn't necessary to type quickly at all. So I could take my time and learn it. So I bought one of the covers that you can put over it, over my laptop keys. I bought one of the uh, kbcovers.com, I think. Bought a cover that went over it and then just committed to that and didn't allow myself to go to QWERTY at all until I felt comfortable typing on Dvorak. And it's prob it's it probably took a couple years to get to the point where Dvorak came, became kind of the go-to for me because I wasn't focusing on training for it in a lot of ways. I know a lot of people do. And if you do like some intense training for like, converting your brain over to Dvorak, you can get it done a lot quicker. But I was just flying by the seat of my pants and didn't really need it. I was proficient and comfortable in it in the span of maybe three months, I think. Two months, somewhere in there. So yeah, it's quite a deal. It's really fun when you just give people your password and they still can't get into your computer. That's fun. <laughs> Confuses them. All right, what else is OmniFocus got here? You got me off topic. You went cold turkey? <laughs> Did not type like a five-year-old. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's about where I was at, Tyler. That, that seems like, and it seems like that's about normal. You really have to let yourself... Um, be bad for a while. You you just have to let that happen. Yeah, it bugs me that iOS doesn't allow Dvorak. Though, at the same time, that's one of the cases where I just leave it on QWERTY. Like, you can do third-party keyboards that give you Dvorak, but they're just not that great. And I have just typed on QWERTY for so long on my phone that I don't even think about it. So I'm still pretty proficient with QWERTY. I don't know if I would say that's necessary, but it works well for me. Inline editing. I have wondered why this didn't exist for a long time. It's, it's one that I feel like can be a game changer for some. But at the same time, I'm not sure how they do that. Like, I'm not sure how they're going to do it because you'd have to, like, tap it and hold it maybe to edit the title versus going into it. I don't know. Yes, Blake. It's like rewriting your whole brain. It's like if you ever... It's similar to... um, uh, What's his name? Smarter every day. Devin? That doesn't sound right. He learned how to ride the backwards bicycle, where if you if you turn the handlebars left, the steering wheel would go right. He taught himself how to ride a backwards bicycle, and that was pretty much what he rode for such a long time that whenever he hopped on a normal bicycle, he couldn't ride it. And it took him a long time to get to that point. And then he was trying to ride a normal bike, and... It wasn't working, wasn't working, wasn't working. And then all of a sudden his brain just clicked. And then he was fine. It, it just worked. I feel like it's similar to that with Dvorak and Omnifo or in <laughs> Dvorak and Omnifos. Dvorak and QWERTY. Like right now my brain can pretty much just switch back and forth. But it's taken a while to get to that point. It it really has. I don't know how inline editing is gonna work. I would love to know. Though I don't really do any editing on my phone. I mean, I have OmniFocus on my phone. Mostly just to see what projects are available. I really wish there was an easy way to... Well, maybe that's what I should do. Put the Kanban board perspective that I have on the home screen. I should probably do that. That's probably what I would use it for. People do that with airplanes. 
because control cables got switched by accident. Oh, so you'd have to like switch which is left and which is right, and then you have to like just let your brain adjust. Yeah, I could see that. I do that regularly with keyboard shortcuts too. So I've got the Linux machine here. There's the iMac over there, but I've also got a PC down here. Um, and I've got it switched to where I can change this screen that I've got sitting here to that PC. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so I can switch it over to a PC. Well, all of like the command tab, alt tab, and then like control tab and such on Linux, like they're all different, right? So I, I'm regularly changing in my brain which ones I have running it at any given time. Anyway, there you go. Inline editing. Layout options. It comes to a fluid row layout and an alternative column layout is available for those who prefer to keep item attributes aligned. In addition to customizing how rows lay out in the outline, display of item attributes can be reordered within the row or disabled entirely. Row layout options can be customized per perspective in the view options or app wide in the layout settings this 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 right here would get me to upgrade all by itself here's why show me this let's go back to that completed one where am i at up here okay this okay if you look underneath of that it's just showing that to do tag that's it I would love for that to show me like the completed date and time, but you can't do that on a per perspective basis that I'm aware of. You can do stuff like that on the Mac, but you cannot do that on iOS. I am quite certain. Yeah, you cannot control that, but you will be able to. Now, if I look at that on, let's, 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 let's look at that same perspective on the Mac. Okay. So this is that same one. And I apologize. It's kind of hard to see, right? But this right now is showing me the project that it belongs to. Now I have not updated this in a while. But I believe, yes, you can adjust this here to be what you want. Now, I'm using this, but you can also go here, set it up to be however you would like, or you can have it in this col uh, column view, and you can make stuff go away. but you also have one that's in your preferences that you can dictate. That is what they're bringing to iOS and iPadOS. Because those are different now. And I continue to forget that, and I call them both iOS. And people get frustrated with me. They'll get over it. All that means is that whenever I look at these perspectives, you can make them exactly what you want just like you can on the Mac. This is why I'm a Mac, because these features like this, they always come to Mac first, because power users use Mac. And iOS and iPadOS are second, second rate citizens. It's my opinion. No, it's not, it's a fact. Keyboard support. I don't ever hook a keyboard up to my phone. I just don't care. Not at all. <laughs> this one's kind of big to me. Action groups, if you group tasks together, in the past, it would just show you the group, I believe, and then if you tap it, like currently, and you tap it, it would go into that group, and then you could see the items under it. This will expand or collapse them, so you can see them all in one, in one view. Kind of a big deal, I think. I want to know what this is. 
they're redesigning the perspective lists in the sidebar on the iPad. Inside out, I can tell these opinions and facts apart. You can't tell them apart. That's what it is. Right. I like that movie. That's a good one. I need to watch it again with my kids. Because when we watched it with them last time, my oldest, it like helped her understand how her brain works. And I loved that. Anyway, they're changing the perspective lists. I don't know what that means. We'll see. Quick open that I never use. It's still weird to me, but people love it. I think that's partially because I just don't, like, if we go here, I just don't have a ton, because it's all checklists, right? I just don't have a ton in here. I just don't. Some old stuff that I need to get rid of, but anyway. Campaign board. So yes. I don't have a ton in it. Have I seen Soul? What is that one? I don't know that one. So no, I haven't. OmniFocus subscribers get it when it releases. If you upgrade, it's a 50% discount. Join the waitlist. If I had a checklist called Manifesto, that would be sweet. I should totally do that. What would it be of? I have a checklist for, oh, I should totally like write a manifesto and then have some form of a checklist of like reviewing and promoting it in some form that happens on a repeated basis. And then I would have a manifesto checklist and I would send it to a tool Gawande because that would be fun. I have no idea what he would do with it. Anyway, here you are. Scheduled improvement prior to the re release of OmniFocus 4. These are some updates that they're making to it. Continuity for Apple Watch, colors, icons, layouts, keyboard stuff. The nearby perspective isn't available temporarily. And quick entry hasn't been implemented. Uh, let's look at this picture. I suppose I should back it off a bit. There, there are a few things that I'm seeing here, right? So this is obviously on an iPad, which is a little frustrating to me, but you know, it is what it is. Either that or these are individual screens. But I would love to know, like, what does that perspectives piece look look at? This right here? I would love to know what's underneath of that. This up here, I like how they're doing this now. Though, at the same time, I wonder if those should be flipped to put future here and past due there. That's kind of what I wonder, but I don't know that. It, I. They generally have thought through that stuff quite a bit, so could probably leave it. Uh, one of the things I was talking about earlier is like the, the columns and the fluid layout that you can have. That's where this is. And I like the look of this. I think they've done a good job redesigning that piece. I, I do. I think they've done well with it. But again, I'm curious, like, what is this? This seems weird to me. That's the one of the few, like this cleans up. This shows the details of the view you're looking at. I would assume this is to bring up the, like the quick open piece is what I'm assuming that is. Soul is the new Pixar movie. Deals with purpose in life and stuff. Interesting. I'll have to look it up. Is it out right now? It'd be sweet if it was. Anyway, I think this will be kind of cool. But again, it's not a complete rewrite of the UI. This is a rewrite of the, the whole app. There you go. OmniFocus 4. This was just announced. 
earlier today. Disney Plus. They're, they're, they're playing that card pretty hard. I don't blame them. Gotta make your monies. I'm already there. Don't do it. All right. We need to talk about resistance. And we need to we need to back up a bit now and just just kind of I need to set the stage for this, I guess is what I'm saying. There are a lot of people right now I can look right at you. There are a lot of people right now who are promoting the process of spending time to externalize your thoughts, okay? That is a thing that a lot of people are doing currently. I'm not saying that's bad. It's it's probably a very good thing. Uh, it gives people space to think. And one of the places that I have seen recently that this has come out is in the process of how do you process the, the tasks, the projects, the time you spend thinking, how do you process all of this and, and where do you do this? Obviously we've heard from a lot of people who are doing this with Obsidian. I know of a lot of people that use, of course, OmniFocus or bullet journaling to doist and things if you lump all those together those cover a vast majority of task management systems and lump that all together with some form of project management type scenario uh, a kanban of sorts i've been doing that part of course in omnifocus my tasks are on my notebook I don't really process thoughts and such, but these are things that people do, right? And the the question becomes how much time and effort is involved in doing that? And is that entire mixology of cocktails? Blake. <laughs> I love it. Totally love it. Just you're just writing an opening paragraph. People want to call these things all sorts of stuff. My my point is that you know, no matter what you do, whenever you put this sort of thing together, whenever you put together some form of a a dashboard of sorts, it's not very efficient. And this is one of the things that people in the PKM world talk about because whenever they're talking about a note garden or map of content, mixology of cocktails, when people talk about these things, they all take a, a, a fairly large amount of time. And... I, I, I feel like it's potentially too much time processing thoughts. Maybe that's just me not doing it. I don't know. Maybe I should be doing that. I don't know. It seems weird. But people do this a lot. And one of the folks that has recently done this, albeit in a slightly different way, is Mr. Max Sparky. Now... He's doing something that I think is significantly different than what a number of other people are doing. Is it so my question is is that time actually sharpening the proverbial axe or is Let's talk about this. Will this work if I do this? There was a thing. Oh, I just remembered something. I'm going to do something quick. This might blare in my ears here for a second. All 
I'm going to use you as a test case here, Blake. Ha! It worked. See, I was working on this. All right. Here we go. So my question is, is the time actually sharpening the proverbial axe or is it procrastinating cutting the tree down? This is this is the thing that I I question this a lot, right? This this is something that I I see come up regularly. People do this a lot. They will spend a ton of time working on you name it. Like there, there, there's so many things. Like, can I build a system that does X, Y, and Z automatic? Right? It's a total squirrel comment. Right? Um, they they spend a lot of time trying to find some form of a system that will make everything happen for them automatically. And that rarely works, right? So it, it, it's easy to spend a lot of time trying to do that sort of thing. But I just find that it makes everything unnecessarily complicated. And I wish they would stop. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I think that there is a lot of potential in some of these systems. I think that generally whenever someone has something like a PKM or some form of a tool that requires a lot of inputs to maintain to maintain the entirety of the system, it's just not worth it. And the actual output they're getting from that input makes it unnecessary. Or I shouldn't say it's unnecessary. It's 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 almost inappropriate. Because they're not moving the needle, as people say. Let's let, let me let me just point this out. Let's let's look at Mr. Sparky's thing. We've we've looked at this before. But I want to look at it again because I've been having some thoughts about it. And effortless. There you go. And he's either on to something here or he's been down a rabbit hole that he shouldn't go down. I got to stand up. Go away, chair. Um. So, just to to, and and again, we've talked about this before. This this particular project status board thing, we've we've talked about this, but I I want to reiterate some things as far as what this is and what his intent is. Let's just go look at the actual board, okay? This is what this looks like. And I would love to see a picture of like where he puts this, but I believe what he explained is that this just sits on a monitor that he's got. I think he's got three. He just sticks it over on one of them and it makes it easy for him to, to access all of this. Now, can I zoom in on this? Not really. I bet I could do this, though. Here we go. Let's look at this in a little more detail. I'm going to specifically look at Max Sparky here in the middle. Okay. Now, there's there's a few things going on here. Uh, not two. There's a few things going on. He has a list of projects. Okay. Right here that are currently active. Yep. So these are currently active projects. These are projects that he's waiting on someone else. Now granted, he, he dropped this in here just as a placeholder. And then he has these, which are projects that are on his radar, but he's not actively working on them. 
Okay. Also, he has this up here. Okay. That is Obsidian, Omnifocus, Base Camp, Airtable. And those are all links that will take him somewhere else. I assume the Obsidian link will take him to some form of a page that lets him see either all of these or some form of like a, a an overarching mission for Max Sparky, his online presence. The... OmniFocus one, I believe, takes him to a folder of all of these projects. And you can see, like, there's an OmniFocus icon on some of these. So that it'll take him to that specific project. Basecamp. I assume it's with projects that are he's working on, like, collaborating with someone else. Airtable. Not real sure what all he's doing there. Does he explain these? He has three screens on his Mac. The left screen is fantastic call, fantastic call and full screen uh, for 14 days. Center screen is no full screen apps. And then the right screen is this project status board. Now this is where he kind of explains all the stuff. So if there's a related thing he puts that icon in there. Now, the thing that a lot of people have asked him about this, similar to Scrum, not really. I, I wouldn't say so. That's a good question, though, Martin. Um, I wouldn't say that this is Scrum. I mean, it kind of looks that way, right, with the three lanes. I could see maybe how you get there. Anyway, this this was inspired by him reading A World Without Email, Cal Newport's book. So many people are looking at Kanban and Kanban or whatever you want to call it, systems because of that book. And I mean this is this is a cool concept, right? But this does this is not automatic by any means. He has to manually create these. So he pulls this up in Omnigraphle and he fills all this in but then he can see where he's at on things by having it on that screen at all times it's a cool concept but I, I just don't see I shouldn't say this when he does this the point of the process is that it's not automatic this is what I mean by adding resistance into the flow of things. By introducing the resistance here, it means that the entire system, the entire system requires your regular input. The second post, yeah. Where's it at? I gotta find it now. So I don't think he has them linked correctly. My search didn't find any matches. I'll find his other other one. Uh, more status board details. But there was another one this yeah this was his second one yep I'm with you was there something specific about this that you because like, this is more about like how he does it and like when he's reviewing these things right and you're confused the ease of use of Kanban boards is one of the things I really like about them. You mean like why it's introducing resistance? 
It's because it's not automatic. That's that's why people are like, for example, this. It's cool, right? But if he adds a new project, he has to manually create that little tile and put all the stuff into it. It doesn't just happen whenever he puts something in OmniFocus. So like that's the manual resistance I'm talking about. Whereas if you were to look at this, this is how I do that sort of thing. This is pretty much automatic. All I'm doing is creating projects, right? Um, and it just drops in where it should. I do know I didn't put this one correctly, but if I hit my button and hit the other button, was oh, it not going to show up? Oh, wait, it is there. Never mind. So these two projects show up there, but it's all automatic just by the press of a button. To do what I just did, Sparky would have to go into OmniGraffle and then put in a new tile and then put in all the information about it, which isn't bad. That's what I'm trying to get at. This isn't necessarily bad. It's it's a lot of work. I mean, when you really look at like all the different details that he puts in here, right? There's a lot that he's a lot of time that he's spending putting this all together. And when he's doing that, like look at this. This right here. I mean, he has to do that for every single one of them. What's the benefit? He's Yeah, I mean this is this so the, here's the article that he explains why he did it, right? See if I can explain this. He's like, here's here's some good stuff. Like he had to stay on top of stuff in law school, right? But ultimately, what he's saying is that he needed some form of process that helped him see where he was with all of these different hats that he's wearing. Yes, it's giving his brain something visual that shows him what's going on. You're absolutely correct. Now I'm tired of standing. Because look at how many, I mean, think about this. Look at this, okay? Let's count, shall we? The number of active projects across five arenas, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. This is 21 active projects, all right? The number that are he is waiting on for someone else is six, seven, eight, that's a placeholder, 11, 12, 13. It's 13 projects he's waiting on from someone else. And then he has five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on his radar. This is a lot of projects. This is a lot of plates to keep in the air. Would a normal Kanban achieve the same? That's a good question. The follow-up to that is, should it? Would you want it to? I just realized the logo that's sitting behind, like underneath of me, not the one, not this one, but the one below me. 
that's a, kind of annoying that that's there the whole time. I wonder why it's there the whole time. I should turn it off if I can. He wanted something custom. I think he didn't want yet another tool. Because here's here's what I'm wondering, and this is something I've debated recently. I have a number of projects that I have going at any given time, but I couldn't really tell you where I'm at on any of those. Which is why this is somewhat appealing to me. I'm not like I'm not trying to say that Sparky's doing something absolutely bad that he shouldn't do here. I'm genuinely curious about this. And it makes me wonder if it's something that I should explore. Because having something like this that is not not automatic, because you know that was one of the points that I was trying to get at earlier. Because it's not automatic, it means that you have to keep an eye on it, actively update it, and choose to use this as a legitimate status, a visible status board of sorts. Like you have to choose to do that. Um, you know, kind of going back to something you said earlier, Martin, you know, is this basically scrum? I, I can't say that like what I think of is not anything digital. I have genuinely thought about like some form of a board above me here that has all of that. So I'm debating putting a cork board up here or a white board of some sort that lets me like do the whole post-it note thing. And then putting some form of a post-it deal that I can move from place to place. But I, I don't think I want the segmentation that he's after. It's like why bullet journal works with having to rewrite instead of just something like OmniFocus or reminders. The resistance keeps you from keeping everything. Absolutely true. And if you're working on these projects and you've got one that sits there and active for a long time, you kind of get tired of looking at it and you want it to move. Which is interesting. Like now that we've come full circle on this, right? This status board, if I were to take this and put it full screen. Do we have a picture of his? I want to see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Studio. Yeah. This is this is his workspace. When's the last time this was updated? I don't think he tells me when it was last updated. This is what he's working with, right? Now, I think he has one of those turned now. I don't think it's exactly vertical on those two side prop, side panels like this. Absolutely. The easier something is, the more likely you will do it. However, monitor envy. Should I take a, is there an easy way for me to do this? I don't know that this cord's gonna be long enough. I'm gonna try. Oh, this won't work because I I got it only in portrait. Here, 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 here. Let's do this. All right, here you go. Let's go through my desk. Here we are. So this is the far left, right? This is what I'm looking at most of the time. And then that's computer, stream deck down there, my Linux box, and then we've got the iMac over there, right? So that's what I'm looking at. The four screens are here, but I'm really only using these three, right? That's what I'm currently working with. But it's a far cry from Mr. Sparky's setup, I think, because 
really I only have the two that I'm using currently on this computer. Has he changed, like, has he rotated them? I feel like the way he has this set up, it would dictate, if it's full screen on a monitor, it would be landscape, not portrait. That's what I'm assuming that this is, especially the one, this right here, I think would be turned to be like so. That's my speculation. I like monitors in portrait mode. I do. I think it comes from my data days. I used to have two that were vertical like that sitting on top of each other so I could have a really long spreadsheet, but the top of it was like way up. So anyway, I think, you know, this is an interesting such an interesting concept like some form of a visual dashboard for all of your projects I really really kind of want to figure out how to do this because like for me like there's this yes but I don't find that I look at this I think it's too easy to bury why is that Martin, you're my motivation guy, right? How do I do that? Seven screens? I had nine at one point. Took me three different computers to do it, but I had nine. Southwest NOC. Image search, I assume. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I always think these things are cool looking. This is sweet. That's a lot going on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's nuts. You need the eye candy of the Kanban. Why is that? And if I built some form of a system like Sparky's, would I use it? That's the question, really. I think for me, <laughs> this is going to sound weird. I would almost need some form of a text file system that I could pull it up on this Linux box and let that be what I use there. But I could also edit it and work with it from my computer. Why are we talking about this? My brain just went to so many different places. It makes me want to like, is there some, like, is there a web browser thing? And I could just make it a HTML file. This, this is going to be bad. But I get the point, right? The... I mean, he's introducing resistance in the process, technically, but he is trading resistance for visibility. Doesn't beat your view. I just caught that. <laughs> Yours is best. <laughs> How would I do this even? Because I'm, I don't have OmniGraffle. I'm not going to pay for it for this. This doesn't cut it. I don't think. Can you make something in Obsidian for this? Sparky is very visual, so it gives him something a text list or file wouldn't. 
too. I think even having it pres present gives him a warm fuzzy that is that all is being tracked. So he can focus. Trello could do it. What is the... There was a... I looked this up at one point. There was a tool that was doing... Is it text file or was it markdown Kanbans? Read my mind, Martin. Didn't I ask this at one point? Not using Visual Studio. <laughs> Splitting his screen into three parts. Created a folder named Kanban. <laughs> this is this is kind of cool. It's due in progress done. You see this? To do in progress done. That's fascinating. That would give you a real quick and easy way to do it, right? <laughs> That's actually really smart. What is the... Did I... I asked this on Twitter at one point. I'm almost certain. Yeah, drag and drop is where that would get to be... I'm pretty sure I asked this. Anyone know a way to set up a Kanban board? Here, 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 here. Somebody replied to this. That was in OmniFocus though. I'm done, that's what it is. Cough up above. Yes, drag and drop, it's for the win. I'm with you, we're friends. Right, because this is possible to open it on Linux and such, too. It's a seven-minute video. Uh, let's see. How much is this? Wait. Here we go. $25. Up to three computers. That would cover it. Above that? That link is the one you checked out. What am I missing? Trello. Yes, a markdown Kanban. I think I'm lost at this point, Martin. I really don't want to spend money on this though. Is there? Wait, what is the? I guess I got one open here. Oh, did you share a link to I'm done? It didn't come through if you did. The I haven't figured out how to let, like, convince YouTube chat to let URLs through. It, like, blocks them. Yeah, so I'm done is here, too. Surely somebody has done something along these lines, right? Go 
come on. Playing chess at the same time. Wait, is this released? 17 days ago. Create markdown backed Kanban boards. Okay. That outputs this. Create a new Kanban. That sure looks like something that would be legit helpful. How do you install it if it's not in the the thingy? Or is it? Community plugins, browse. Is it in here? Well, what do you know? It's in here. Now, where did it go? Kanban. Okay. So if I go here, let's create a new board. <laughs> All looks great, but if I tried it to Wisby. <laughs> Add a list. Okay. Um, Toto. In progress. Done. Oh, wait. Waiting. Done. Okay. So now, let's go here. So if I do that, what all do I get with it? Edit the card. What happens if I hit... Dude. This is nuts. I did not know you could do this in here. Obsidian continues to amaze me. What is the... Uh, I wanted to see... This is the markdown. Yeah. Which is what you would expect. Yeah, because he's just got this at the top. Well, that is not what I expected to find in this search at all. Twibby. You got to watch out for the Twibbies. I have a Twibby here. Look, I have a Twibby. Hey, look, another Twibby. <laughs> I'm going to call them Twibbies from now on. What does... What does... What does... What does... A note look like in these... I suppose I could just... I double click them. That's the card. A new note from the card. Okay, so never mind. Oh, that would be kind of helpful though. I can add a date. Uh, I guess that would be today. So then, what does? Ha 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 ha. Exactly. Twisby, Twisby, talking to you. Sponsor me, please. I will sell you lots of pens. <laughs> As if I haven't already. This is why they don't sponsor me. 
So if I do that, what is that icon? Oh, you can archive it once it's in there. Fascinating. That I might be able to get behind. Can you, now that I've done this, I don't know what I'm doing when I do that. I will sell them lots of pens. I will sell lots of their pens. What did I say? I'm gonna sell them lots of pens. Here, buy a sailor. I have so many thoughts right now. I'm having a hard time processing. Is this what I'm trying to do? I feel like this is potentially best case scenario. Um, let's do this. Uh, that would be next week's. No. Nope. Next Monday. Okay, so if I add that, it's nice that it just lets you keep adding things, right? You can add a date. I wonder what, what does the date do though? Like what, what's it matter? What would the point be? Great question. <laughs> Who cares? It's pretty like this. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to use I'm done if I can do it right in Obsidian. I feel like that plugin kind of eliminates. Is that you, Blake? No. I saw that avatar and I thought, wait, it looked kind of like your pilot deal. Um, Great question. I have to geek out once in a while. I... If I'm gonna use this, first off, I have a button on my deck that'll do this, which is kind of cool. I believe, where is it at? There is a way, you can open another vault. If I open this, does it give me two? Oh, it's already open. Isn't there a way to open in another window? Isn't that possible? I don't know how you do that. Open a default app. I don't want to make a copy. There's a way to do this, isn't there? Board settings, open as markdown. That's interesting. Huh, I'm not smart enough for this one, apparently. I think... I think... What do I think? First off, I need to add some styling to this. Because um, that would be hard for me to... Like, 2021, 05, what would that be? 24? Like, if I had multiple of those up there... Go back over here. Yeah, so like this one. If I add that. I feel like that's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a slight different background on them. That's kind of hard for me to make out. So I could see putting some, like putting a blue, like invert it, right? Put the blue with the white text on it so that it's easier to differentiate those cards. But it is interesting how like you could take this and then you could make a note from that card, right? Cause then it links it. And then clicking on it would open that up. That's pretty slick. And then from here, you could link, say, an OmniFocus project and such. 
how you used to build mental pictures from multiple instruments. Now there's one or two that shows you everything. Situational awareness, that's a big deal, right? Here's, I, I'm trying to process why I think this is interesting other than just, it's cool. And I think it's because I never really know where I am when I'm working on things. Like for example, I have, I think three YouTube videos that I've been working on in my brain and I have three different newsletters that I've been working on. But I easily get lost in working on like a side code project or I don't even know what, like I, I get lost in these things. I mean, Adderall helps, right? But that doesn't solve the motivation issue. And maybe that's it, right? This is this is a, 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 a bank of resistance against the automated setup of things. Like the setup of the visuals. And having this visual maybe that solves some of the issue it makes it easier to see things and i want to move it over to done but i don't think these would be the right categories if that were the case these are the standards right So if these, like to do, I get, it's kind of in queue. I'm gonna call it queue. In progress, sure, waiting. Like in progress would mean I've started it, right? But the next state would be what, drafted? What would that be? In progress, start, I should just say, started, drafted, edited, done. But like if it's a video, there's a recording process in there. What am I missing? Because I could just say in progress, I'm waiting. And it's not done until it's published. I suppose I could do that. I feel like I would want to have limits as far as what's in this. Who, if you were on the effortless stream for Bookworm last Friday, I was talking about upper and lower bounds of work to do. Work to do. And trying to set what's the minimum amount of work I'll do in a day versus the most work I would do in a day. Maybe that should play into this. I like Q better though than to do. People love to put to do on things. You would put done whenever it's scheduled. Is there something that has to do with the calendaring? Also, I think is if you hold command, yeah, it opens it up in a new one. Whereas if you just click on it, yeah. What if it's already open? Does it open it twice? It does. But isn't there a way to open up multiple windows? There's got to be a way to do that. I thought. I don't want to do that. Right? I don't have two open. Yeah, it won't let me do that. It's not letting me open the window twice on the same. Only allowed to have a certain number of projects in progress at once. Well, I guess, I suppose here would be the question. What if I have multiple Kanbans? One of them is writing. One of them is video. 
One of them, one of them is like newsletters. One of them's video. One of them streams. That I don't like that. That I I feel like it's it's too spread out. I gotta figure this out. Multiple win multiple windows of the same vault. How do I do this? Bit of misinformation. VS Code does allow multi window. I don't care about VS Code. Three days ago was the last thing. What did they say? They think it would be confusing. So you just use something else. Suppose I could do that. When you have more than say four windows open, you use track of which document is where. I don't think I would have that problem. What I would really want to do is stick the Kanban up over in the corner and then just leave it there all day. I think that's actually the golden ticket with this. Like what Sparky's talking about with this, this doesn't work unless he has it on a screen the whole time. I don't think it works. Because if it's hidden, like with this, for me, because this is hidden most of the time, I don't ever use it. So maybe that's it. I shouldn't be trying to use this. I should be using this. Is that the, is that the answer? Don't know. This is pretty slick though. Open his markdown. It is interesting. Mental fatigue thing with having it open at all times. What would that be? Like, why would it be fatiguing? Like, it's, it's, to be fair, the place that I'm talking about putting it. So I'm looking at you right now. It would be over here. Like, it's over here in the corner. So I would be looking at it right now. But to be honest with you, the vast majority of my day, I'm spent looking right here. It's kind of way over here. Switching costs? Maybe. I I feel like that might be part of the, like, how do you choose what to do? But I hear you, Martin. Like, the motivation thing is, like, that struggle is real. Feeling of all the things you could or should be doing somehow in the corner of your eye. Yeah, this is... Is there a way for me to show you my stream deck live? Here, yeah, I think this will work. There you go. So I use this stream deck. This is what's actually visible on my stream deck right now. Whenever I'm, oh, here you go. Whenever I'm streaming, um, this is what I look at. So whenever I'm choosing what to show you, this is what I, what I see. <laughs> this is how I switch things from thing to thing. Anyway, back on the homepage. This is where it goes whenever I don't have anything specific, like no specific applications open. And I have that Pomodoro. You see that? So this here, those two, Pomodoro and Break, those are just timers and they send off audio in, in my ears. That's some of what I use to make sure I'm focusing on things for a certain amount of time. And I just got your thing on cartoons. It's so true. It's like, ah! like this one's red, this one's blue. And I don't know what to do. 
But if it's up at all times... To tap myself in the face. That's actually... That's a new one I put there. And it is a bit strange to like, poke myself in the nose. Um, I... It goes to the YouTube channel. So... I can hit that and it will take me to whatever the latest live stream or latest video is that I've posted on the channel. And it's kind of nice. It makes it quick to get to the page. That way I can get it so I can copy the link and share it. It just makes it quicker. But that's the only reason that's there is because I have a lot of open spots on the home page. Like if I go to... I suppose this won't do it because it's open. If I go to OmniFocus, actually, that's right. I got to get out of all this stuff to get there because it hides it when I do that. Uh, this is what I see whenever I open up OmniFocus. I didn't know we were going to talk about Stream Decks today. Uh, I cheat a lot with this because I wanted this to make the whole Kanban thing in OmniFocus easy. So maybe that's what I need to do is I just need to take that window and stick that window up over here. Maybe that would be the helpful thing. But this, I can just select a project and then I can hit any of these buttons and that's what moves it from column to column in there. So that's kind of nice. Um, the other one I use a lot is when I have Obsidian open. This is what I see. And I have specific notes for today, the week, the month, in an inbox of things that I want to review. And that's what those top ones are. They just take me to different places inside of it. These two, like the left one, that will, um, let me move this down. So whenever I'm in here, if I hit that square, it does that, right? And if I go back here, you see how it's changed. And if I hit that again, is it going to work when I'm there? No, it won't. Yeah, if I hit it again, it'll go like so. It'll open it back up. Old multifunction displays, yep. Want one of these for an airplane? There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. They don't do it already. Do what already? The Kanban thing? Or are these buttons? I have to program all of these. I put this one in here, the forum, to make it easy to get to the forum if I have Obsidian open. These are kind of nice because they just input H1 through H3 headers in there. And then these down at the bottom, these will move a given note to those spots. It'll take it to the root folder. It'll take it to my dated folder, which is inside the bin folder, a content folder, and a sources folder. So it will automatically put whatever note I currently have open on those, in those folders. Um, this makes it easy to rename it because I found out it's kind of a pain to rename things. There's not like a hot key I can hit to do that. Um, and then because I've got my notes database wired up to a Git repo, I can hit that button and it will pull whatever the new notes are. The red one just deletes it, deletes whatever note I have open, but it's all just one press away. It's kind of slick. I like it. But I keep those four on the right. If you notice, no matter where I go, those four are always there because those are the different scenes I use when I'm streaming or running webinars and such. And it makes it a lot easier for me to control what's happening when I'm on those scenarios. And clicking to different apps and sometimes will bring me back to this default page because of the way I want it set up. But that's a bit of a pain to get back to, say, this to change a scene, right? So I just put all those, and I have a lot of buttons here, right? Anyway, Stream Deck. I wasn't planning on talking about that today. There you go. All that to say, I wonder if I should just put this up in the corner. Because you could easily have a perspective that opens up in a new window, right? What is the... You can hide the sidebar, hide the inspector. 
Like I could do something like this, but it's it's messy because I would want like the column view. I don't really care for that. I don't know. Don't know. Try it for a week and see what I think. Yeah, that's probably the real answer, Martin. Which one? You pick. You tell me what to do. I don't think I like... I mean, I like that it's in Obsidian. I don't like that I can ha can't have it open. I suppose I could cheat, right? Can I cheat? <laughs> here, 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 here. Come on, open up. Can I do that? I can. Check that out. Now, that means, though, that I would need to reinstall this, though. Okay. Turn that on. Uh, let's see. I would have to get my theme on it, though. Yeah. So I could do that and cheat it. Totally going to cheat it. You like it to be pretty? Yeah, I could see how this is less than pretty, but that's where like the styling on it would have to come in. Um, let's look at, uh, let's see, where am I? I think I want, that. Let's do this. I don't actually know what's getting ready to happen. I feel like I may have just broke something. Use Max Sparky's template. Okay, so that gets me that. It gets me back to where I was now. Um, but at the same time, I think there's probably, it, it probably just did. Oh no, it didn't. I thought maybe it would have installed a whole bunch of plugins, but it did not. And that's fine, I didn't want it to. So I could use this just for that. Now the problem is those don't exist. So I wouldn't be able to click the links from this because like that just created a link that created a, uh, a note that I didn't want. Delete and don't ask me. So I wouldn't be able to click those links if I used them. I would have to use, I would have to open it from here <coughs> and click them from here because these I would be fine with right that actually needs to move because I don't want it out here it's a little bit finicky you can't go from here you can't close that and click on it oh yeah you can never mind 
I was wrong. So there is a workaround. I know there's some weirdness whenever you have like nested vaults, but I think as long as I'm just doing this, right? Can you reorder these? You can. Fascinating. Yeah, it's so true, Blake. Like finding what works. Can you see the matrix and green symbols or do you have to be in the matrix to process it? Yeah, it's true. Um, Oh, what would I use? I think, I think, I think, I think I would use the obsidian version because the other thing I would do too, if I go here, if I copy that as a link, right? But I also want that. Uh, I need to do it here. Add a card. If I drop that in, whoop, you gotta hit enter. If I do that, create a note from it, and then do this. Does that actually link? Oh, that doesn't link. That's annoying. I'm gonna let them know on that one. That's a nuisance. Does this work? It does. That does too. Okay. So I could do that. And then it would open that up. Simple pretty things. Yeah, I think I could probably automate that entire thing with a button press. Do you want to just do that now? Let's do that now. Um, what is the... So if I click on it out here, is there a shortcut for copy as link? There's not. Um... Does Command Shift C do anything? Format. Command Option Shift C. Some form of an automation. That clears it. I didn't want to do that. Put that back on there. Uh, let's see. What else can I do? Option Shift Command. Let's see. I got to find a shortcut. That would do it. Okay, so here's how I do this. This will be fun. Uh, what was it I was trying to do? Edit. Was it edit? Yeah, edit copy as link. Keyboard settings. Shortcuts. App shortcuts. OmniFocus. Let's add one. Let's see, where is this? Copy as link, keyboard shortcut is that. Okay. I'm gonna set this over here so I don't lose it, just for now. So if I select that and hit that, it copies it as a link. Okay, so now I have that shortcut. I can make that go away. So now let's do this. Okay, back to the stream deck. Let's go into OmniFocus. You want to like Asana more than Trello? All right, what do I want this to do? Uh, stream deck, system, where is the... I don't see it. OBS, soundboard, stream deck, switch profile. Why can I not see? There's like a multi-action that I'm trying to find. I feel like it should be right there. There it is. So if I drop a multi-action in, 
Where would I want this to be? Probably down here, because it'll actually create things. Okay, so now that I have that, uh, we need to have it hit a hotkey. Okay, so the first thing it needs to do is hit that hotkey. Then what does it need to do? It needs to go to... needs to open an app. So from there, it needs to open up Obsidian. Come on, catch up. I missed it. So it's gonna open up Obsidian, all right? Once it's done that, it needs to do what? It needs to open this up. You're working using Microsoft one? All right, so from here, we want it to hit Command L and go here. And I'm gonna be extremely verbose about that. Okay, so we go back in here. So now we need to do a hotkey and it's gonna do Command L and then it's gonna type text. And I want it to type that. And then I want it to hit enter when it's done with that. Okay. So if I go back here. So now it has me at this. Okay. Um, how do I get it to add a card though? Does this exist? No. I suppose I gotta have it just show up here though. Oh, uh, that might not actually be possible. 365 has a Kanban view? The planner? I don't know how to get it to click that button. Will it let me open in what is the, what's the thing? Open as markdown. It won't let me just hit command E to edit. Open as. No, that won't let me do anything either. I may not be able to do that one because there's no way to hit that. Like I could probably get it shoehorned in here <laughs> that may not work. Because it would copy the link. So it would copy it. It would open up the Kanban. Here, just, just for fun. I select this and I hit that button that's what it's doing currently oh you know what it should do as well teams has pulls and aggregates tasks from outlook OneNote, and planner that's interesting oh here here we go here we go I'm not gonna get all of this but if I select it over here, what is it, tab? Because I have a clipboard manager. So if I have it selected, let's go back in here. It's gonna copy the link. Okay, before I open Obsidian though, let's have it hit tab. Will that work? No, that won't work. I don't need a hotkey. I just need text. Will that work? No, I don't think that will work either. Is there a way to just tell this to copy the title? I 
that's not what I want. What do I tell it is to hit the tab key? Oh. Just, you know, like, like you do. Hit tab. Let's get rid of that one. And then once it's hit tab, we want it to copy. Okay. Then it's going to go to Obsidian and it's going to open up the Kanban. So now I would have the URL. You're clueless, Blake. I would have the URL copied and I would have the title copied. Okay. So let's just run this. We'll see where we get. Um, what do I want this to be? Uh, let's do this. I need to create a new template because I've got a webinar on Wednesday. Workflows with Dave Kalo. All right, so there's that template. Now I have that selected here. And if I run that action, it brings me here with everything copied. So I should be able to paste that, hit enter, new note from card. And if I make a link, I should be able to do that. And this should take me to that. Sweet. Okay. So. You haven't even downloaded Obsidian. All right, so then that's that key. I don't even know what to call that now. I think I have some images still here. We'll just use this. Copy to Obsidian. And we want to center that. Let's make it bigger. Okay. So now I can just hit the button and it'll copy all the things and take me to Obsidian. Okay. That's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> and then that actually gives me a good place to collect things for I okay this would this would be like really nice for putting together the outline for that webinar right There you go. And I have that all here. But now that I've started that, this goes over here. But it's easy to just do this, too. Um, I wonder... Here. Here, 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 here. Now, this doesn't solve the issue. This isn't the same as what I would... What am I trying to say? This this is similar to what I was running into with OmniFocus, right? So this what I'm about to do would not be helpful. But if I go into this Obsidian one, I could easily make a thing here. Okay, so if we do a hotkey, Command P, drop in text, and I had that Kanban, Kanban thing. Press enter. Okay. Now this. <laughs> you need to get out of Wednesday's stuff. Uh, what is this one? It's a folder. What do I want it to be? Um, that'd be good. 
Let's do that one. And then we can just make this hand band. Uh, I think I have these at 11. Oh yeah, and I did the trick of, uh, what is it? If you do that, that's what I do. Yep. Okay, so now if I hit that button, well, let me go somewhere else. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That one that I just made up. If I hit that Kanban button, oh, it didn't hit enter. 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 Oh, is it not going to go? Oh, because I'm a doofus. Uh, where do I need to be? Obsidian. This. That needs to be command L. Not command P. L is the action palette. L is the search for me. So now if I hit that button, yeah, it takes me straight there. So now I have a button that just takes me straight to that Kanban. You reread Essentialism? That's interesting if it covers some of the points from... from uh, Effortless. I think Josh is trying to find me right now. He's texting me. Um, all right, bye Martin. I'm about done here too. Um, the other thing you can do you freaking forget. It's so true. Um, the other thing we can do here. If you go here, we can copy this. Right? So we can copy that. We can go back to the top here. I can take these and move them over. We can paste that one in. But then... I can put something at the top of it first. Which means that from here, if I can find it, there. You can have it open Obsidian first and then run it. So like I'm on OmniFocus right now, okay? Uh, if I go to that default and then hit that Kanban, yeah, takes me straight to it. Cool, cool. I may try this. I mean, it's nice that I can have this open because I buried it in a folder. But I can do the editing and stuff from here. That's kind of nice. I like that. Cool, cool, cool. So many things you can do with this stuff. Right? I mean, it, it, it continues to amaze me that, like, I can just make these buttons that do stuff. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. I got to run. I do, I do. Thanks for going on this adventure with me today. Um, if you have not already... Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. And <laughs> welcome, Derek. Nice timing. <laughs> Sorry about the YouTube switch. You'll have to give me another subscribe here. Apologies. It's a bit of a pain. I need to do a write-up and, and such on it so that people can catch up. But yeah, give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram. That's another way to stay up to date if you haven't already. Also... I don't know why that thing was flashing like that. Check out analogjoe.com. Uh, as we were just talking about, Dave Kalo is going to join us on Wednesday. I think I got to confirm that with him. Uh, I had to move it because of COVID. <laughs> so I'm doing well. Appreciate you guys asking, though. So 
There's a lot more on resistance to talk about. I'm sure it'll come up again at some point. So yes. Thanks for jumping in today. And uh, yeah, I can tell I got a few bugs on some things to work out here. Just still trying to figure out how all the stuff on YouTube works. So we're getting there, getting closer. All right, that all said, I'm gonna split, tie off a few things, wrap up my day. And onward and upward. So yes, I will see you guys on Wednesday if you can. Otherwise, I'll see you in a week. And we'll be right back here, right where we're at, right here on YouTube. Take care, team. Bye now. I got to hit the button. <laughs>